The Discovery, Chapter 2, Part 2. Maybe it knows a way to reverse aging? It could have some kind of force field that doesn't require constant magical effort from a unicorn to maintain. Perhaps it could know a way for those not gifted with wings to fly? I, I have to save it, no matter the risk. Despite her brave intentions, Midnight couldn't help but look at both sides of the possibilities. What if it eats ponies? What, what if it's just a decoy and the real alien is invisible and waiting to claim an easy meal? Even so, Midnight forced those thoughts to the back of her head. No, this creature's hurt and needs help. I have to help it. She was less than ten feet away from it now, close enough to see all of the small details that she couldn't see before. Firstly, it was wearing clothes, so maybe it wasn't so different from ponies after all. Its legs were longer than a pony's, and it had strange, elongated hooves that seemed to be flattened and stuck out past the ankle. Black working boots adorned its hooves while its pants were deep navy blue. A black belt with some accessory mounts wrapped itself around the creature's waist. Clearly, there was meant to be some additional apparel there. Further up, its shirt was jet black with a logo that read Nebula in bright blue fancy lettering. Its sleeves covered most of its... fur? Apparently, it didn't have much, just enough hair on its forearms to maybe keep warm and mild cold but nothing frigid like the equestrian winters. What caught her attention here was the strange spider-like appendages attached to its forearms. They were covered in a thin black material with all the tears and blood the rest of its body was covered with. Finally reaching the creature's head, its face was decidedly flat, with smaller eyes than a pony's, ears on the side of its head, a small nose that couldn't possibly supply a creature that big with enough air, and a decent amount of fur on the top of its head. Getting even closer, Midnight started to see the sure signs that this creature had in fact endured the devastation behind them both. Its pants were torn on the left side and a jagged piece of metal stuck out through both sides of the lower part of its leg. Blood was oozing out of the torn clothing, creating the small puddle now surrounding the offending impalement. Its right leg had terrible burns running all around it, with only a few burnt and melted pieces of cloth clinging to the charred skin. Its chest was mostly unscathed, save for a few tears in the shirt fabric and a few small burns. There seemed to be only minor burns and cuts on the creature's arms and spider hooves. Finally, the creature's head had a deep gash on the left side, running from just above the eye to just above the ear. Blood had been dripping down the left side of its head for quite a while, as its shoulder and neck were drenched in the crimson liquid. Eyes wide and goosebumps covering her entire body, Midnight closed the last few meters until she was standing directly in front of the strange alien. Fear and curiosity battled each other in a relentless hailstorm of emotions raging in her head. At any moment, the creature could wake up and devour her, or abduct her and take her back to its worlds to be experimented on. Midnight stood there for what felt like hours before she finally managed to move her hoof. Slowly but surely, her right hoof came up towards the creature, and she gently poked its chest. Nothing. She nudged it a little harder this time. Still nothing. Feeling much more at ease, she checked over its injuries to see what needed to be addressed first. Having spent quite some time as a medic, Midnight knew how to treat injuries such as these, but there was one problem. She didn't have her aid bag. She realized that she didn't have anything except her scarf on. Cursing under her breath for her lack of foresight, she quickly thought through her options. There wasn't much she could do for the burns now, but with her scarf she could deal with at least two of the creature's injuries. Removing the garments with her magic, she teared it in half lengthwise, making two strips, one almost double the width of the other. I really hope this works. You don't look like a pony, but everything is kind of in the right place still. I think. She made her way down back to its leg and raised it slightly with her magic. If it was anything like ponies at all, there would be veins and arteries running down its legs. She wrapped the thinner strip of scarf around its thigh, a couple of inches above the knee. Wrapping extra tight to create a makeshift tourniquet, she breathed a sigh of relief, as the bleeding seemed slow. She used more magic to gently raise the creature's head and wrapped the larger of the two strips around its head, covering the gash and slowing the bleeding. Gently lowering its head, she checked over its body once more for serious bleeding. Happy that she found nothing life-threatening, she moved on to the next step. Okay, emerging check, airways are next, then breathing, and then circulation. She brought her ear close to the creature's face, listening for any indication that its airway might be obstructed. Hearing only slightly raspy breaths, she decided its airway was clear enough to move to the next step, breathing. Rolling the creature onto its back as gently as physically possible, she checked its chest as it rose and fell, making sure to note if one side of the chest wasn't rising as much as the other. Luckily, nothing seemed to be wrong there. For the last step, she had to check for a pulse and blood circulation. Pressing her hoof against the alien's neck, she waited for the beat of its heart. It was weak, but it was still there. Midnight breathed a sigh of relief. She may not have saved the creature's life just yet, but she had bought it precious time. 
Now it was time for her to move it somewhere else where she could treat it properly. She looked for a way to move the alien without causing it more harm, but found nothing of any use. Midnight sighed. <sighs> Guess I'll just have to levitate you up the mountain. This is gonna be a workout. Summoning her magic once more, she wrapped the alien in her sapphire aura and gingerly lifted it off the ground. It was heavy. At least the weight of a full-grown stallion, maybe even a little heavier. Grunting with the effort to lift such a large creature, Midnight slowly lifted until it was levitating just a few feet off of the ground. Turning around, Midnight's heart sank as she realized just how far she had to climb back up the mountain with a heavy alien on her back, so to speak. She turned to the creature, now hovering close behind her, she started to walk and speak. I hope that was enough to keep you alive for a bit. This is going to be a long hike. Every step was agony. Midnight's hooves hurt and her legs burned. Her magic was getting weaker and weaker from the constant strain. More than once, she had slipped and nearly fell off the cliffside. She almost dropped the creature during one of those slips. The rough, jagged rocks hurt her hooves, but provided just enough grip for her to climb, albeit just barely. It was a good thing that she was a unicorn. Any other species wouldn't be able to carry the alien up a cliff without potentially injuring it even more. As she climbed and climbed, her legs grew tired and weary. Exhaustion forced her to stop and catch her breath time and time again. Uh, I need a hit. I chimp more often. Midnight groaned. As she looked up the cliff, she couldn't help the dread that worked its way into her heart. Still a long way to go. Two hours of heavy lifting and climbing had taken its toll on the dark unicorn mare. Her mane was disheveled and messy. Her coat was damp with sweat and covered in dirt and dust. More than once, she had stumbled and nearly fell, nearly dragging the unconscious alien with her. She had to set him down every so often so as to save her strength, causing the trek to last well into Celestia's early morning sunrise. Even now, with her current situation, she couldn't help but admire the beauty through her tired eyes. Rest would come soon enough, but not before she tended to the creature's wounds. Finally pulling herself over the last edge with the creature shakily floating up behind her, Midnight rolled onto her back, making sure to gently set the alien down before releasing her magical hold on it. Panting, she stared straight up into the sky, thankful that she had made it. Taking a minute to catch her breath, she turned to the creature now illuminated by the early morning sunlight. She couldn't help but notice how cute it was. Sure, there was blood all over its face and torn up, blood-soaked scarf wrapped around its head, but something about his face screamed friendly. Maybe it was just how helpless it was. It was badly injured and unconscious, completely at her mercy. But Midnight was no sadist, though. She loved all creatures, small and large. Summoning her last bit of strength to her weary legs, Midnight rose to her hooves. Her horn glowed with magical energy once more, and the creature followed suit not a moment later. With a grunt, the alien was hoisted into the air, trailing closely behind Midnight as she began the quick trot back to her house. Luckily, no ponies were out and about yet. It was still a little early for any pony to be outside doing anything, save for Princess Celestia and the Royal Guards assuming duty from the Night Guard. Thankful for her luck, Midnight carried the creature the rest of the way to her house. Not a soul traveled along the route to intercept them, and before long, they arrived at her house. Finding her saddlebags still lying where she dropped them, Midnight quickly fished for her keys and upon finding them, unlocked the door and pulled the creature inside. She walked through the main entrance into the living room, careful not to bump the alien's head on any of her furniture or decorations. Hooking a right, she brought it to her guest room and opened the door. The room smelled fresh and clean, not a soul having been there for months or, well, years. Stepping out of the way, Midnight levitated the creature through the doorway and onto the bed. <sighs> These sheets are definitely gonna have to be changed out after today. Definitely. Under any other circumstance, she would have gone and reported to the Night Guard about her findings. But the alien skin had changed since she first saw it. It was much paler now than before, and looked like it would be dead within a few hours. I don't even think you'd make it to the hospital now. Quickly making her way back out of the room, Midnight walked down the hall to a closet with three locks. She unlocked all three in a quick practiced order and opened the door. She found the large crate that she was looking for in the middle of the closet and opened it. On top of the supplies was her old uniform. It was still neatly folded and clean. Taking care not to wrinkle or dirty it, she levitated it to the side and began digging through the medical equipment. Supplies went missing all the time, and it was easy to grab a bag of morphine without any pony noticing. Grabbing an IV bag, IV pole, a needle, and alcohol wipes, Midnight walked back to the unconscious alien in her guest room. Once inside, she began setting her equipment up. At best, it would keep the creature alive long enough to give her time to think about what to do with it. She hooked the IV back up to the pole, and after wiping the alien's arm with the alcohol wipes, inserted the needle in a large vein on its forearm. She was quickly relieved to see the IV bag begin to drip, a smile even forming on her lips. Unfortunately, her smile quickly disappeared upon looking down at the form in front of her. 
She saw the bloody leg, jagged steel breaching both sides of the fleshy muscle. Midnight sighed. She knew that she would have to remove it, but there was no telling if adding drugs to the mix to keep the creature sedated would work or possibly kill it. Midnight sat there, head in her hooves, debating what to do. If she went ahead to try to fix the alien herself, she could end up killing it. The first extraterrestrial to visit Equestria, and she kills it by injecting it with too many drugs. Not how she wanted to go down in history. On the other side of the coin though, if she did nothing, it would surely bleed out. It was close to death as it was already, and taking it to a hospital was out of the question as well. By the time it even got there, it would be long dead. Teleportation had several risks. Firstly, that the creature's body might not be able to take that kind of dematerialization and rematerialization. And second, that its wounds might be worsened by the journey, also killing it. Lastly, she wasn't even sure that she could teleport both the alien and herself that far. She had the knowledge and the equipment to do the work, but doing surgery on an alien that she knew nothing about with no help would be tough especially with a weight of possible future relations with its species resting squarely on her shoulders should she fail. Midnight took one last glance over the creature before leaving the room and walking down the hallway. She walked up the stairs and took the first door to her right, leading into the bathroom. Finding the shower just as clean and relaxing as when she last left it, she stepped inside and turned the water on, adjusting the water nearly as hot as it could get. If I'm gonna save that thing's life, I'm gonna need to get the dirt off my hopes first. She just said that that thing was cute. There's no shot that they aren't gonna fug. Anyway, I'm gonna stop and let's get on to our saviors of donators. Top donators are 630, Peter Coltard, J10 Man, Darkside, Only One Thing, and Dash of Evergreen. Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Crazy Color 557, Stu Hex, Sword Brother and Mordred, Omicron Lyra, Will, Chris Twingy, Hatsaza, Ride Soul, Maverick, and many more fantastic people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.